Excellency President William Ruto and all the dignitaries present here, uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Kenyans, Your Excellency, the last two years you've profiled our country tremendously across the world. No wonder the statements which my brother here, PCS, has made are the sentiments that um, are not only prevailing in Kenya, but also out there. And that's how it should be. <clears throat> because Your Excellency, other than being president and the CEO of our country, you're also our head of state and our chief diplomat and the embodiment of what Kenya is, its values, and what its interests are. Your Excellency, this forum, and I want to congratulate the Foreign Affairs Ministry led by PCS Musalia and the PSS and everyone who has participated in this. This forum is a point of reflection and introspection on number one, what is our national interest? And that question we will ask for as long as Kenya exists. It's not a one-off thing that we define and, and that's it. We have to keep on asking what is our national interest. And as the ministry has presented in this, through this draft and the stakeholders who prepared this draft, our national interest lies in some of the most sacred and bedrock principles that are espoused in our constitution, including, but not limited to, the inviolability of our country. And everywhere, every inch of Kenya, where the flag flies and where the national anthem is sung, that space called Kenya is inviolable, it is uh, the embodiment of our pride and should be protected at all costs. But it's also about our values, which is the software that runs Kenya, our culture and our aspirations. Thirdly, it's also reflected in the bottom-up economic transformation agenda and Vision 2030, which aspires to provide a more inclusive country and greater sharing of the wealth and the resources of Kenya to benefit the entire population of Kenya and to pull as many people from our homeland from dehumanizing poverty and sharing the ecological, natural, and the other resources that are available in our country to the benefit of as many people as we can. Your Excellency, that's the national interest, in my view. But it's also about the security and stability of our country. That leads me, as I move towards the conclusion of these remarks, to also say this, our national interest, is essential to our national survival. And therefore, this foreign policy is about the sustainability of our country in the decades and centuries to come. What is that that will make Kenya survive in this very complex, competitive, and insecure world? Many decades when this generation might not be here, many centuries, obviously, when all of us will not be here. Is it not in making sure our country is stable as you continue to lead us, Your Excellency? Is it not in making sure that we protect the resources in our country, make them available to the majority of the citizens, 
fight corruption and make sure that the national wealth is used to benefit the country, projecting ourselves and selling our image out there as a country which is good for investment, which is good for business, and which can attract the resources from outside this country to come and benefit our people. Those are the questions that this foreign policy review uh, should help us answer. And therefore, I am very, very, very proud as a citizen of this country that we are reflecting on these things at a time like this and at a time when we are witnessing many changes across the world, the stress around existing multilateral systems, the emergence of plural, um, uh, plural uh, systems, as has been said here, and how do we harness all these uh, divergent uh, developments for the benefit of our country. And therefore, uh, we would want to listen to Your Excellency and hear what vision you, has, you have for us and how do we take cue, those of us who are serving in your administration, how do we take cue from that vision to help us navigate the interests of Kenya and make sure that we hand over this country to future generations, a stable country, united country, prosperous country that can sustain the shocks that are prevailing today and those that will come in the future. With those many remarks, Your Excellency, I want to request all my colleagues to be upstanding and welcome His Excellency the President to give us his vision with a round of applause. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take our seats. Asante Nisana. Your Excellencies, Honorable Members, Fellow Kenyans, let me first take this opportunity to congratulate the team led by our Prime Cabinet Secretary and the two departments of Foreign Affairs and of Diaspora Affairs for what I have seen is a job very well done. Congratulations from us. And today we mark a significant milestone in the crucial process of reviewing and consolidating our foreign policy into a comprehensive document. 